I'm Giz. And welcome to the first episode of Watching Crap. Today, we're gonna watch some crap. So let's get on the boat and float out into the sea of crap that the world has to offer. Well, not crap per se. After all, this is one of my favorite anime movies. From the country of Japan, we have a little sci-fi number known as They Were Eleven. So right off the bat, we get somebody's logo, and then Kitty Studios, who actually made this movie. Was that just the director's name or something? If so, he's an arrogant bastard. Now we come to the cover of a Carl Sagan DVD. Man, I'm liking this movie already. And what is this music? It's positively interstellar. You know, I really like it when movies open like this. It gives you such a sense of mood and makes what comes after all the more poignant and... The God damn it. Why they gotta talk over this? The, the Japanese don't have to put up with this shit, they can just read the subtitles. Anyway, our hero's named Tada and he studies his whole life to pass this exam. The one that'll make him a member of the Star Trek crew. Typical Japanese. Even in the future, they're still subjecting themselves to these ridiculous exams. He finishes the final problem, and... Did he pass? DID HE PASS?! Huh. Okay. Okay what? Okay you failed? What? So now Tada has to take some key card to some place and... It takes a while. I honestly have no idea what is with all this key card business. I guess it's for pacing, but it just seems kind of unnecessary to me. But hey, at least we got to admire the ass. So, turns out there's one more exam. Tada needs to go on some spaceship with ten other wannabe Kirks. But hold on, there's an extra man! In Mario, that would be a good thing. But here, they act like it's a catastrophe! Okay, mystery person, who are you and what are you doing here? Finally, the other dudes take off their helmets. And it turns out in the future, there's lots of racists <sighs> against green people. You were assigned to our team. Huh? Son of a gun! I can't believe you're one of us. As well as sexists. After saving the ship once a bomb explodes. Oh yeah, the ship is full of freaking bombs. Our hero starts freaking out about the extra man again. But Tada has a solution. I should claim to be Napoleon. How would you prove I'm not? Hmm. I would know if you were lying. Are you a mind reader or what? I'm not claiming that I'm anything like a mind reader. I just have a very strong sense of intuition. I'm willing to accept whatever you say. Huh. A strong sense of intuition, you say? All right. I'll let you decide which one of us we burn at the stake. Shall I go first? If you like, I'm King of Aristocale, Sava Group. My Embassesca, AQ00820. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? So, is he a mind reader or not? Because touching people's hands to figure out whether they're telling the truth or lying seems kind of like something a mind reader would do. This turns into a My convenient Amazon device to introduce the pretty large and all-male cast. Hey. I don't know. Here's another Terran. Mm, no. Actually, that's a hobbit. Uh, uh, huh? Hey, your hand's bigger than mine. Hmm, I wonder why. Of course, what does this actually accomplish? I prefer Nothing. to use my nickname, Ganga. Well, who's the 11th man? Which one of us is lying? It was me. Nobody lied. What happened? Of course! Tata blames himself and has a deep soliloquy, which leads to this delightful scene. What? After lunch? Sorry. This is one of my favorite scenes between Link and Applejack. I mean, it shows what great chemistry they have, and it's just really the only chemistry that any two characters have in this film. Oh, man, like, oh. What are you talking about? Your arms are a little longer. My shoulders are wider, too. Yeah, and look at our feet. Yours are a lot larger. You'd better go see a psychiatrist. Oh! Uh <laughs> Aww, so cute. Well, seems bombs weren't enough. This ship is also infested with, it looks um... Like jungle. Conductor vines, hey. apparently. Look like conductor vines. Conductor what? Vines that conduct electricity. Hmm. I was wondering when this kid was gonna say something. I guess when the name of your movie is They Were Eleven, you have to toss in a few throwaway characters. They've been neglected, so they're overgrown and starting to go to seed. Should I care about this? I don't know. While other people care about important things, Tada and Not a Girl shoot the shit and espouse some theories on what the ship's deal is. What happened to those passengers who were on this ship when they had to abandon it? I'd like to believe they were rescued. 
I really wish we were sure of that. There's no way that we could ever be sure of it. I got a feeling they all died. Huh? Huh? Turns out not Psychic Boy was actually born on this ship before all the Conductor Vines killed everybody. It raises the emotional stakes a bit, but Tata's so bland it doesn't really matter. And then Tata comes back to the real world and something happens that's totally his fault. Circuit e. What? Switch it on now. E? Okay. <laughs> so now because it's his fault, Tata has to heal Captain Beefheart. But he needs some help. Is anyone qualified to be my assistant? I've had some experience, Tata. Will you let me help you? Good, get down. Okay, sure. That'll work. Not green blood. Have you ever seen that before? I've never seen any of this before. You said you had experience. I watched a lot of videos in school, but I've never seen the real thing. Yeah, I watched a few YouTube videos, and now I'm pretty sure I'm a fully qualified surgeon. Uh, don't worry, though. I'm tough. I can handle it. Under the knife, Beefy's revealed to be a cyborg, some kind of Superman. But I'm gonna knock it down anyway. You're not a Superman. Hey, your patient is doing fine. My body heals a lot quicker than yours. And I'm faster. And stronger. Basically, I'm better in every possible way imaginable. Just so you know. I'm a cyborg. What? Hijinks, oh hijinks, how I love thee. You're kidding me. That's a girl? This whole time, that was a girl? I mean... All she did was come in here looking like a girl, acting like a girl, and never really clarifying whether or not they were a girl. We lived here for a couple of weeks, you know, she slept uh, in the boys' room, whatever, and suddenly it turns out it's a freaking girl. I mean, uh, who saw that one coming? Am I right, guys? Yeah. Jeez. The obvious question here is, does this even matter? Well, it shouldn't. But it's implied that Tata has the hot for her, and he's straight, so... Well, we'll see where this goes. As we reach our climax, everybody turns against Tada. Alliances are made, crossed, and double-crossed. I'm gonna with my own two eyes. I saw Tata reach out and turn the air regulator down, and I can't forget it. It's almost as good as Indiana Jones 4, am I right? I keyed, I keyed. Everyone thinks Tada is the 11th man, but Betty's got her own theory. A game theory. I'm getting sick and tired of these accusations of yours. I wish everybody would stop all this ridiculous talk about a number 11. There is no number 11. Really? There's no number 11? Are you sure? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I think there's a number 11. Everyone's getting sick. Tata said he'd make a vaccine. He promised, but he lied. Tata's a dirty, rotten liar. So now, yes, she's female is sick and no. They're gonna throw the test. We have to finish the exam. I'll check into the hospital as soon as it's over. It's just three years, Fro. Be reasonable. We can't yeah, whatever, man, right? Christ, I don't want to go to school for one day. Well, what's this year? Turns out that was what they were supposed to do. And number 11 was this guy. You know, the freaking obvious guy that was so obvious you thought he was a red herring. Look at him. But he was just a plant, so everybody gets an A. And that means Dixie gets to get the operation to be a boy. Oh, that's why they got pissed when people called them a girl. It would only take one line, man. Don't call me a girl. I consider myself male. Now that I can make the decision for myself, I want to be a woman. Wait, what? No. No! Shit, no! Shit, no! She... She decides she doesn't want to be a boy after all. Cause then she couldn't be with straight boy Tada. Even though they had good chemistry when she was a boy. Nope, nope. I'm not even going into the implications of this shit. So now they're a hetero couple and it's all a happy ever after. Yay! 
Well, that was They Were Eleven. Wasn't this a wild ride? Despite all the negative things I've said in this review, they were all yucks! And this movie is in my top 100 easily. Despite some blandness and overused cliches, it's got that spark of originality that kept me interested beginning to end. I'm not gonna say it's on par with Kubrick, but sorry Kubrick, it's great! <laughs> to be under the sea in an octopus's garden in the shade he'd let us in knows where we've been in his octopus's garden in the shade